All righty, good morning, Travel Dons, and welcome back to the adventures of a traveling Don. And I am here at our farmhouse. So we're heading to Cork, as I promised you in the last video. We're heading to Cork. We're going to do Middleton, James, uh, the Jameson um, Distillery a little bit later. Uh, but we're going to go to Cork, hit up the old English market, kind of look around town, kind of give you a little, little, little tour of that. But first, I want to kind of show you guys the place we're staying at. I showed you, I think, in my arrival video, uh, the inside of the house that we're staying in. But I wanted to show you kind of the grounds. Uh, um, like Barbara um, and her family are the ones that own this place. And this is outside of Waterford, uh, outside of a little town called Portlaw. And it's this beautiful, massive acreage that's got these sweeping views of the mountains uh, in the background. Uh, they have horses, they have geese here, a beautiful little pond. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you got a couple of the, uh, the guard dogs uh, here are Mr. Uh, Mr. Thompson's the little one. And then Mr. Douglas is the older uh, guard dog but uh, they're super nice really nice the people that the family that run this place are fantastic like every morning we get fresh eggs like fresh chicken eggs um, which is phenomenal you know it's been a long time since I've had fresh eggs but uh, this place is amazing like the, the the place that we're staying inside is really nice which you saw and this is just like waking up to this every morning just taking a walk before we go out can't get better. I'll leave links in the description for uh, her Airbnb and through uh, Verbo as well. Uh, so if you're ever in this area, you can check them out. And it wasn't actually that expensive. I know it's off season, but even still, we only paid like like 110 bucks a night for the family. And it's like it's a three bedroom place, and you know you get all these like little things that little nice touches, like family touches they do for you. It's really cool. It makes you feel at home. So it's kind of sad. This is our last full day here. Uh, we leave tomorrow. But I just wanted to give you guys a little view of the area. Alrighty, onwards to Cork. Alright, so when you are on your way to Cork uh, from where we were at, which is basically, if you're basically from going from Waterford to Cork, uh, you can pull off off to uh, to a road area and head down to Ballycotton. Uh, it's a nice little kind of just very tight um, Irish uh, scenic roads, but it's a beautiful, beautiful area. It's a small little town, uh, which of course is right here on the Atlantic Ocean. This is the southern coast here. It's uh, known as one of the little gems of uh, County Cork in the Ring of Cork area. And what's really cool is they actually have this massive uh, lighthouse that's right out. Right out. Uh, there on the island. Uh, I believe you can actually do tours out there on certain days uh, and during, during certain seasons, but it is beautiful. It's really chilly out here right now, but it is a gorgeous, gorgeous sight. So we're going to go ahead and go towards the Valley Cotton Cliffs Walk, and we're going to walk a little bit of that and give you a little bit of that before we head on to the next point. <music> Traveling Dons, welcome to the Traveling Dawn channel. I'm your new host, James Aaron O. And I'm the co-host, Michael Adam O. We're taking over for Ben today because he's useless. Oh, hi, pipe, pipe. This is what I have to deal with. <laughs> Two weeks. This is what I got to deal with. December 2nd, can't come fast enough. Paris can't come fast enough. So the Ballycotton Cliff Walk is about, if you do the entire alternate routes and whatnot, it's almost about a 10.5 kilometer hike. Not too strenuous, just a few ups and downs, but it goes along these cliffs, which are absolutely fantastic. And then the alternate route goes back inland, comes across, I think, to the other side of the bay, and then comes back down in the Ballycotton itself. So, but it is a gorgeous area. Not on the level of the Cliffs of Moor, but you don't have the traffic that you get with the Cliffs of Moor, and it's still just as beautiful and majestic. Absolutely fantastic. So anyway, onwards. <laughs> Alright, 
right, so the exciting time is here. We have made it to the Jameson Distillery here in Cork. This is not the original, uh, but this is the the one that they do down here in Cork in the South End. So we're gonna go in and do a tour real quick. So at the end of the tour, you always get a drink. Now, we paid a little extra for this one. This is the distillery edition, but I wanted to try this. This is Jameson Distillery Edition. Oh my God, that smells good. Oh, it's almost like a sweet almond or candy, or like candied, candied pecan, candy almond. Oh, that smells good. Ooh, that's nice. It's lighter than I was expecting, uh, but it doesn't have really a lot of burn. Burn, nice, very smooth, mild, like light honey uh, flavor to it. Maybe like some honey suckle, more like it's like just a, like a touch of floralness to it. This is actually this distillery edition, Jameson distillery edition. That's really good. Hmm. Hmm. That's some good whiskey. So that was the tour and the uh, the tasting at the end. Uh, my apologies, I wasn't able to kind of like talk throughout the main part of the tour, but uh, they only allow small clip, uh, clips and snippets. And there are certain areas where you can only take pictures. Uh, you're not allowed to take videos, uh, but it is really cool. This is the Middle Middleton Distillery. While it is owned by a conglomerate uh, mixture of Jameson Powers and Middleton dis, uh, dis Irish distilleries, uh, it this goes back to about 1825. Um, and that used to be a mixture of like Patty and Middleton itself so uh, at least early Middleton so it was all kind of like different back then but it's kind of cool because this is this is the where it, where it all kind of originated when it came to Irish whiskey in this part of Ireland of course Jameson really kind of started that off in Dublin in uh, 1780 but here in this part of area in Cork this or not Cork but Middleton near the Cork region this is where it I kind of all began. It is a beautiful, beautiful set of buildings. They no longer really make uh, the whiskey uh, here. They make it right next door into like the new, you know, uh, the new the new facilities, which are much more modern. But even still, it was kind of cool to like go through the whole, uh, the old history of it all. So, but that was a lot of fun. And uh, of course, Michael, a whiskey connoisseur, agrees. What do I agree with? That this was an amazing experience, and uh, I have had uh, four things of whiskey at this point. Yes. <laughs> so have I. We've yes. both had four things of whiskey. By the way, Michael, you and I a couple years ago did the Jameson tour in Dublin. What do you think? Differences? Better? I enjoyed this more because mm. you get to see the uh, process of how they make the whiskey, uh, at least in a more intimate setting as opposed to how they do it in Dublin. So uh, yeah. if you're ever in uh, Middleton, definitely this place 
yeah. worth it. I do, I, I highly recommend doing both um, because the one in uh, Dublin is definitely kind of like, it's much more of a modern kind of building. Uh, it's really cool. It actually goes into specifically Jameson's history, whereas in this is the history of Middleton Distillery itself. So it, it, Jameson is only a part of that. Um, but both are really good. You get a drink at the end of it, which is fantastic. And uh, both are, you know, it's an experience and I highly recommend doing both. But I agree with Michael. This is cooler because this is kind of like, goes back to the roots uh, and you can see the roots. Whereas in the Jameson Distillery is so very modern now, um, even though you get the history of it, you don't kind of like feel like you're in it. This you really do. So, all right, off to go get some dinner now. So dinner today here is in Middleton, and we're going to a place called Sage Restaurant. It's kind of off the beaten path. Uh, it's off the main road, but you have to take like a side, turn right and take like a side alley to go into it, um, into the back area. It's a really beautiful spot. It's small, but it's really nice. Uh, they do have a outdoor kind of like covered seating as well, which is really cool. But they have a beautiful menu. It's all kind of like locally sourced produce. You even look at the menu and it tells you all the like places that everything comes from. Uh, and it's not a big menu, so you know that they're taking care of just the simple about 15 to 20 dishes that they can do perfectly. So we're gonna get a, like a smattering like about five or six different dishes and we're gonna try all of those, okay. Okay, so to start off, we've got from the snack collection, just like three different plates. Uh, starting off, of course, when you are here in Ireland, you definitely gotta get the butter and the bread. And this right here is their house uh, potato bread. So it's a uh, charred fermented potato bread with sage cultured butter. And oh my God, it looks good. It's nice and hot. So, Oh my God. Mm. That is amazing bread. Got a little bit of sourness to it, a little berry to it, but mm, being warm is just so good. Just comes down really good. And then next we have, of course, the uh, it's a it's a local charcuterie uh, from I think it's uh, West Kerry area is where it comes from. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of this charcuterie. I'll let you see real quick. That's what that looks like right there. It comes with a little bit of focaccia bread there for you and some fennel, but I'm just gonna try straight up the meat for you there. Yeah. Oh. That is fantastic focaccia. Mm. Nice amount of saltiness to that. That is absolutely fantastic. And now the final one of the beginners is the sardines. Let me get the sardines real quick. Yeah, these are some grilled sardines. Uh, I haven't had sardines since uh, I was in Spain about two years ago. And these come with coriander, garlic, and a little bit of lemon. And these look absolutely fantastic. I'm thinking this has got to have like a little bit of like a chimichurri on the side there for you. So that looks really good. Let me try that. Mmm. Mmm. I love sardines. A good sardine you can't beat. Not super fishy. The chimichurri just kind of like hits you right in the back. But that is fantastic. Oh, that is a great start. Yeah, definitely sage restaurant. Killing it so far. Okay, so for my main, I actually got two small dishes. I got one of the starters and one of the sides. Uh, for the main kind of starter I got is a gnocchi with beef ragu, uh, fried, uh, uh, excuse me, fried sage and ricotta. So this looks absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna get a little bit of everything into one bite. Get a little bit of that cheese in there. It's just like, it looks so good. It's like, oh. Mm. Mm. That is fan freaking tastic. Mm. 
little rich, savory, just a touch of saltiness. You get, of course, that potato that just kind of moves in. It's really good. Now, let's try these carrots here. Uh, these are uh, grilled uh, carrots that come with uh, duca. It's a Middle Eastern duca spice, and I'm not sure what the sauce is here, but we're gonna try this right off. Your fonduta. Is that the fonduta? It's the fonduta. Yeah, it's the fonduta. So it has fonduta, as I've been told. So a little bit of cheese. Oh, yeah. You know, a little bit of, little bit of saltiness from the cheese. Um, and then, of course, you have the sweetness of the carrot. And then just kind of like that nice nuttiness of the duco spice, which is really nice. Mm. Oh, these are both fantastic. I, nothing wrong with sage. I mean, so far, everything that we've had has been fantastic. So. Oh, so good. All right, so finishing off our dessert here at Sage Restaurant, uh, we have got a almond and blackberry tart with a little creme fraiche. It looks like they put some dates on top of that as well. It looks absolutely fantastic. Try a little bite of that. Ooh. Those are figs. Right. Are they figs? Those are figs. Mm. Excuse me, they're figs. Oh, that was delicious. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I got some tea coming as well. Oh, man. I'm gonna try one of these figs real quick as well. Very soft. Mm. Yummy, nice and sweet. Mm. Great way to cap off the dinner here. Definitely get that uh, almond and uh, blackberry. If they still have it. I mean, they do everything um, locally and kind of like seasonally. So their menu is constantly changing, but anyway, good stuff. All right, so that was Sage Restaurant and the end of the day today. I uh, do apologize that once again, we did not get to Cork. I didn't realize that Sunday that the market was number one closed and there was also a lot of traffic going in and out. So we decided to hit just the coast that we did. And then of course, we weren't gonna miss that Jameson Irish whiskey uh, tour. So uh, that was more important. So we got the important stuff out of the way. So I hope you guys enjoyed all that. I'll leave all the links in the description for everything here. And then of course, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more content coming up on these uh, Europe trips for the holidays. So anyway guys, have a great night and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.